Hey, Fight fans, it's John Pollock with you for Fight News Now Extra. Stay tuned as John Randy and Robin Black are joining me to chat today's news, including the World Series of Fighting switching around a lightweight title bout, Antonio Silva already planning ahead of Mark Hunt, and the UFC signs a popular AKA fighter to a new deal. Ariel Hawani was the one to report that the UFC has signed Daniel Cormier to a new eight-fight contract following his move to the UFC this past year where he notched victories over Frank Mir and Roy Nelson. Cormier is in the process of cutting down to 205 pounds and there is talk of matching Cormier against fellow analyst Rashad Evans in March of next year. Antonio Silva is headlining in Australia against Mark Hunt at Fight Night 33 but already has plans for what he wants after the fight. In speaking to MMAfighting.com, Silva stated that he would like to fight Josh Barnett after this one, as Barnett is scheduled to fight later this month against Travis Brown at UFC 168 on December the 28th. And just days after announcing a fight between Justin Gaethje and Jay-Z Calvacante, the World Series of Fighting promotion has been forced to rebook their first lightweight title fight as Calvacante has pulled out of the fight due to an injury. The new main event for WSOF 8 on January the 18th will see Gaethje take on 9-0 Luis Gonzalez, who debuted for the organization this past August with a technical decision victory over Antonio McKee. So guys, uh, a few light news notes to talk about, but Daniel Cormier certainly not going anywhere, uh, but it seems like 205 pounds is his destination, and I've liked the idea of him and Rashad Evans for, for a long time at this point. I think that makes a good first fight for him at 205 pounds and could be very advantageous for either guy to get a win over the other. Again, we talked about this before. I like the idea of Dan Cormier going up and down from heavyweight down to 205 pounds. Is that, uh, some, is that an easy transition? Yeah, we debated this. Yeah. I'm not a fan of this. Randine's fine with it. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I'm I'm fine with it as a fan, but if you're Cormier, man, you're one place or the other having to cut weight and not cut weight. We've seen Henderson flip-flop back and forth, and we've seen Chelsea do it. Guys can do it. I think it's great as far as to be able to see guys have the best possible matchups. Yeah. But I think for the fighter, you find a way, you get yourself into the shape that you want to be in, you get your diet, you create a structure, and you, you stay with it. So I think it's better for the fighter. Although, on the other hand, it's better for his career to be able to do just about anything. So there's a, I'm kind of halfway in between, as I often am. You know, fa fa Famously, Daniel Cormier, his body completely shut down ahead of the 2008 Olympics, and it was a big result for why he has fought at heavyweight mm -hmm. for so long and now making this move down to 205 pounds. We have a bit of a similar story right now uh, with the Cage Warriors show that's coming up on Saturday. Ulysses Gomez was set to make his debut with the organization, taking on Neil Siri for their flyweight championship, and the result here is that his body uh, pretty much just said he can't take any more at this point, and that fight is now off. And it seems that with weight cutting, I seem to see we're going to see, you know, a different mentality where it seems to be that, you know, some of these guys are absolutely torturing themselves. And I think once people really understand some of the practices that go on here and we had a, we had a death recently in Brazil, I mean, is this going to re-examine things at all when it comes to weight cutting or are these just, you know, unforeseen abnormalities to the norm? I think there's a bit of both. I mean, some guys, they treat every single part of it like an arms race. If I can be one or two pounds heavier than you in a fight, that's a great thing. Other guys are starting, I mean, Frankie Edgar famously for a long time didn't cut any weight and was the lightweight champion of the world. So there's both camps, but guys who come from that long time wrestling base, they are so hell bent on being as big as humanly possible. You know, it's a rough one. I mean, as I, I used to cut almost up to 20 pounds by the end, and I felt big and strong going into those fights, and it was really worth it. But on the other hand, when you're seeing main events off, you're seeing guys get ill, it isn't worth it. So that there's two camps on that, and there's going to be for a long time. I know that uh, mixed martial arts loves to be very, very different than boxing, but maybe that's something that they have to examine, that bringing in other weight classes might make sense, because some guys kind of you know fit in between, whether it be 125 pounds and 135 pounds, and I know we don't I don't want to have you know all these different weight classes but sometimes I think it might make sense to start adding new weight classes and I think this will alleviate that problem well it seems like you know a solution that is absolutely not going to be implemented but I mean if you surveyed every single fighter out there who enjoys weight cutting? Mm -hmm. I think nobody no. is going to put their hand up. Nobody enjoys weight cutting, but everybody likes the psychological advantage of being bigger but than that's your other it's guy. It's like if you had this 
this different mentality where everyone just competed at what they walked around at, you'd have healthier fighters, which would yeah. theoretically produce more entertaining fights because guys aren't going in drained, but you would you will never have yeah. that. It's impossible. Everybody agrees that if we all just walked around in the world and the weight that you were physically fit at, you fought at, it would be better for everybody. But there'll always be somebody going, well, you know, there's the same day weigh-ins, but I'm gonna cut 15 pounds, I'm gonna be bigger. It just, it's not that people don't agree, it's that it's impossible to manage when everybody's looking for an advantage. Uh, let's take a look uh, as well going into the weekend. A number of cards going on. Uh, we have Invicta FC returning to pay-per-view on Saturday night, World Series of Fighting. They have a show in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, two promotions that are really, tr uh, you know, essentially struggling right now to, to gain some kind of momentum, get some kind of an audience for them outside of number one. And maybe if you want to classify Bellator as number two, they're fighting for number three right now. But given now that we've seen these both organizations now for over a year and a half around, around that time frame, what do you th see as the positives and negatives of the these two organizations as they've tried to kind of find that niche audience for their product? Well, the negatives are they're, it's just growing pains. They're going to have to continue to grow. They're going to have to lose money, and that's just the name of the game right now. But you have to stick to it. All you have to do is look at 1FC, for example. Uh, we aired their show today on Friday, and there's a lot of people there. That It's an absolutely new market, and 1FC are doing all the right things that they need to do. They're having local fighters. They're bringing in uh, name brand fighters as well. They're taking guys that were cut from the UFC, go out, entertain the crowd, and make sure that you have a quality product. And 1FC has done that, Invicta has done that, but now it just comes down to everybody to realize that they have a good product. It, that's an interesting comparison because Invicta is like, let's slowly grow, build the base, and expand from that. And World Series of Fighting is like, let's be modern capitalists and let's use acquisitions, buy, yeah. buy organizations. Which one will last? World Series of Fighting will be losing a lot of money in the short term, hoping to gain it in the long term. Invicta, slow growth is always safe. Well, you can catch those events coming up on Saturday. The Invicta FC prelims will be airing here Saturday night on Fight Network, so you can catch those as well. But right now, we have more coming at you with more Fight News Now Extra.